see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. Okay, we've all seen that, uh, the, the three wise monkeys. Um, it's an interesting uh, statement on uh, many levels, and it uh, can be read many different ways. Um, some people have said that it's uh, an illustration of just how stupid it is to um, deliberately block out any of the bad things in the world and refuse to speak about the bad things in the world. Now, I, I agree with that interpretation because the three wise monkeys are a little sort of aphorism or parable that can be seen in any number of ways. Um, I would say, though, that if you're editing out all the bad things in the world because you simply don't want to see it, i.e. if you're engaging in what's known as the ostrich response, you're burying your head in the sand, um, doing the opposite is pretty much the same thing. Um, see no good, hear no good, speak no good. Okay, that's pretty obvious that uh, each one of those is, uh, is equally valid. Um, uh, now, the interesting conclusion about that is, is we, of course, make the universe what we uh, wish to see. It's a confirmation bias. We uh, decide in ourselves what we're going to see, hear, and speak, and we act on that. The, the uh, bias is in us. The universe just is. It, what we make of it is uh, our own choice. Now, okay, I think most of us understand that concept. It's not difficult. Um, but the interesting thing about that is, is in terms of the antinatalist argument, and in particular in terms of uh, my friend, the uh, good David Benatar, is he seems to actually criticize certain people for engaging in the first one, uh, see here and speak no evil, and then advocate that people see here and speak no good. Um, because uh, in his uh, latest quote that I'd, I'd like to uh, deconstruct, he says, cheery optimists have a much less realistic view of themselves than do those who are depressed. Okay, uh, I've already dealt with the fact that that's either a stupid or uh, an, an arrogant thing to say, simply because he doesn't know whether or not people have an accurate worldview, and he's assuming that his worldview is more accurate than theirs. In other words, he's sort of gone into the other camp see no good, hear no good, speak no good. Okay, so he's just saying that it makes sense to actually be depressed and it's a lot more intelligent and realistic than to be optimistic. Now, that's, that's how I believe that he is allowing his bias to taint his entire work. Um, having said that, uh, there's another little uh, in interesting implication of, of this point of view. Um, he equates... Uh, harm and suffering um, with reasons not to want to have been born, where it would have been better not to have been born, better never to have been. Um, and these are the reasons why it is better never to have been. But the interesting thing, though, is when you edit out the uh, good things in the world and you deliberately take in nothing but the bad, you are allowing your bias to lead you to a situation in which you are actively seeking out the bad and actively blocking yourself to the good. The reverse of the three wise monkeys, the sort of uh, reverse kind of stupidity where you're deliberately blocking out anything uh, that might conflict with your basic premise. Um, it's sort of the reverse of the Pollyanna principle. Um, if the Pollyanna principle is kind of dumb, in other words, you you edit out anything that conflicts with your own view of yourself, then the reverse of the Pollyanna principle is not necessarily uh, true. Because if you edit out anything, uh, or rather edit in anything that conflicts with your sense of your own worth, or if you edit in all of the, uh, the negative things in the world, or the, the reasons why you are pessimistic or depressed, you are guilty of the same sort of confirmation bias as the Pollyanna is. It's interesting, and, and, and it's sort of, it's interesting where, when, when you actually look at this, it's almost as if David Benatar is saying, it's better never to have been because of all the harm in the world, and following hard upon that premise is the idea that it makes more sense to look for harm, to accept harm, and to draw harm towards oneself than it does to keep it out. Blindly, Looking for harm is just as dumb as blindly refusing to accept its existence. Brainwashing is brainwashing. It doesn't matter who's actually doing it. Um, 
It's interesting, and once again, that's why I think that Mr. Benatar is deliberately sort of pulling the wool over his own eyes. He's deliberately distorting um, his uh, a priori assumptions uh, in order to confirm the premise that he's already put forward. And he's doing it in such a way that is just as dumb as the methods used by people that he criticizes. Interesting how, uh, how scientists or intelligent people or philosophers can fall for the exact same errors that they accuse their opponents or antagonists or, uh, or uh, sparring partners of, uh, of committing. Well, um, again, that's why I say I, uh, there's a lot of very intelligent people that I disagree with, and Mr. Benatar is one of them. I don't dispute his intelligence at all, but um, I think that he's uh, deliberately um, editing out and censoring the uh, information that he's receiving from the outside world as surely as he accuses everyone else of doing the same thing. Thank you.